plan to introduce Notre Dame to the game of college football. And so these Michigan Wolverines have been a solid cornerstone of the foundation of the game all through the years. 693 victories over the seasons, more than any other. So in perspective of history, it is fair to hail, hail to the victors valiant, hail to the conquering heroes, hail, hail to Michigan. You can call them the champions of the West. This will be the 86th consecutive game in the stadium in which more than 100,000 people have attended. And now the Wolverine. Division 1A coach, 184 of his 224 wins in his coaching career have been here in Ann Arbor at the University of Michigan. The series record for these two teams, Michigan having won 13 of the first 20 games, but the Irish have won the last two. Now let's join Roger Twivel in our New York studio. ABC's College Football, brought to you by GEO. Get to know GEO, sold and serviced by Chevrolet GEO dealers. By Allstate, for home, auto, and life insurance, you're in good hands with Allstate. By U.S. Navy, you are tomorrow, you are the Navy. And by Federal Express, the best way to ship it over there. Notre Dame will kick off. Michigan will receive. Craig Hendrick, a freshman, gut for Illinois, will kick off for the Irish. Deep to receive for Michigan. Number 21 is Desmond Howard. He is a freshman flanker. Number 42 is Tony Bowles. He is the tailback. That's Bowles to the right side of the picture. And the man that Michigan would like to have get his hands on the ball. And the first time today, as we're ready for the kickoff, I see a patch of blue sky. Long, high, deep, hanging kick way back into the end zone. The freshman Howard handles it cleanly, touches it down, and it'll be Michigan first down at the 20. So that's a big leg from Godfrey, Illinois. Michigan in the maze and blue at home. The Irish in white on the road. And here comes Michigan out with one of the biggest offensive fronts in the history of college football. 290, 290, 280, 295, and 340. And the quarterback, Michael Taylor, senior, Lincoln Heights, Ohio. The heat's on Michael today. Leroy Horde opens at the backfield with Jared Bunch. Callaway is the man in motion, a wide out. The handoff goes to the big man, Jared Bunch, a 240 pound junior, and he picks up about three. Here's the offense for Michigan now. It is Taylor, 5'11 and 180 at quarterback. The tailback starting is Horde, but he will share time with Tony Bowles, and the fullback, Jared Bunch, is the big man with Callaway and McMurtry, two wideouts that can really run. There's your offensive front. The Asterix are returning starters for Michigan. Seven. Walker, the tight end, is 6'1 and 250. And here's the handoff, this time to Leroy Horde, and he gets up to the 25 before Bob Dahl, a defensive tackle, brings him down. 
the defense for the Irish. Kowalkowski and uh, McDonald are the ends. Andre Jones has got a sore leg. Dahl, Zorich, Alm. Alm is the biggest of the group at 6'7", 270. The linebackers are Don Grimm and Ned Bolkar. The secondary is very good. Light, Terrell, Francisco, and Samagala. Ford is out. Howard is in. You got three wideouts now for Michigan. It is third down and a long five. And Taylor straight back. Has time. Underneath. Goes short to Bunch. And Bunch is stopped short of the first down. And so Michigan's going to have to punt it. So the Wolverines do not get the 10, Bob, in their first series. They didn't make a first down, but they also did not turn the ball over. It would have been critical for the first team offensively, whether it was Notre Dame or Michigan, to come out and turn it over. Defense creates momentum, and Michigan at least did not turn it over. Number 16 is Eduardo Ascona, a redshirt freshman from Saint Laurent, Quebec. That's Ricky Waters. He is the tailback, and he is a dynamite kick return man. Pressure. But he gets the putt away on the wet field. It pops straight up in the air. Michigan puts it down, and the Irish will start very good field position because the kick was only 29 yards. Blue Hoax now talking to the senior from Woodruff, South Carolina, the quarterback Tony Rice, who has blossomed as a senior quarterback for the Irish. He didn't do too badly last year, but the poise and confidence, I think, is so much more obvious now than it ever has been in his young life. He's big enough, too. 6'1", 200. Michigan shows a six-man front right now defensively. They hand it off to the up man, Anthony Johnson. He fumbled the football as he was going down, but will retain possession as he crosses midfield to the Michigan 49-yard line. Rice, the senior from Woodruff, South Carolina. Anthony Johnson, the hometowner from South Bend. Ricky Waters, the tailback from Harrisburg, PA. Ismail and Eilers are the wideouts, and both are very fast. Jacobs, the tight end, with Brennan, Ryan, Help, Runehard, and Brown, the big people in the trenches. Again, it is Johnson, the up man, and Anthony, a 220-pounder, pounds his way down to the Michigan 46-yard line. He's close to a first down. The Michigan defense is White Osmond Hutchinson. Hutchinson moving into the spot. He's a redshirt freshman, the play, position played by Mark Messner. Marshall, Grant, Anderson, Abrams. They're the backers, and they're all good ones. Anderson playing with turf toe. The secondary, you again, the Asterix are the starters from a year ago with Lance Cotton, the key man, because he is the new man. Dotton will be to the wide side of the field most of the time as the uh, first down yardage marker is just six inches short of the first down. Dotton will always be to the wide side, and he'll be assigned most of the time to cover Rocket Ismail, the uh, speedy wide receiver for Lou Holtz's uh, Irish. Rodney Culliver comes into the tailback position for the Irish. He's a 220-pound sophomore from Detroit. So they've got Johnson. Anthony has carried the ball successively as the up man. The Irish offensive front getting off the ball very quickly on the first two steps. For a big play, nope. Quarterback to the 45, and he's got the first down. Lou Holtz is the master of deception. It was a great opportunity on the uh, Michigan 45-yard line. Short yardage on third and uh, six inches to fake it into the line and go top. But uh, I think it was a smart call. You got foul weather. You want to make sure you get something out of your first drive. I think the first down there was more important than trying for a big play with this mile. So first down, Irish. Wolverines 45. Pat Eilers comes back in. Culver stays in. Culver's got the ball. Big hole left side. Big run by Culver. First down Irish. Michigan 32-yard line. Lance Dutton made the tackle. Watch the guards. Both guards, Grunhardt and uh, Ryan, are going to lead around the left side. 
Good blocking up front. There's a nice hole. You run wide, stretch it to the sideline, cut up inside with another first down. Ricky Waters comes in now, replacing Culver. Ismail and Eilers both to the bottom of the picture as the wideouts. First down, Irish, Michigan 32. Rice hands it inside, and Anthony Johnson is finding nothing but daylight. And he slides inside the 10. First down and goal to go, Notre Dame. He ran over Trip Wellborn to get inside the 10. Michigan is primed to stop Tony Rice, number nine. He comes down the line. He does not have the ball, has not carried it yet. Holtz establishing the inside game. Johnson with a great run, breaking tackles inside the 10-yard line. First and goal, it's just inside the nine for the Irish. Rice, you got a hot hand, play it, right? Give it back to Anthony Johnson, and he'll take you down to the six. Pick up with about three. We've burned just about five minutes of the first quarter. Four punt by Michigan. You got a Michigan man hurt on the play. It's Mike Teeter, the middle guard, and he's holding an ankle. So Teeter is hurt. Time out for him. Mike Teeter in part of the goal line defense for Michigan. Hurt an ankle, helped off the field. We'll have to unwrap him. Alex Marshall will get into the ball game. Alex Marshall that's coming off a bruised kidney, but all right to play in the first defensive series today. It is second down and goal to go. Notre Dame, Michigan, six yard line. And Culver is back into the game. Culver with the ball. Down to about the four. He likes those big backs. He's got Johnson at 220. Culver weighs 220. It's just a power football play. In last year's game at South Bend, Notre Dame won the ball game 19 to 17, but did not score an offensive touchdown. They scored three, four field goals and a punt return by Waters were their 19 points. They're inside the five yard line this time, maybe doing something today they couldn't do all of last year. Trying here to take the crowd out of the game early. Third down and goal for the Irish. They go to the wishbone. That puts Eilers in the backfield, number 13, with Johnson and Coleman. Rice may choose to keep it here. Nope. Gives it inside to Johnson and nothing doing. Michigan ate him up. Brett White, the first man to get there. And the kicking unit will come on for Notre Dame. That looked to be a checkoff. As you see, Holt now, and Rice is explaining why I checked off. It was supposed to go to the left. He checked off back to the right side, and the play obviously didn't work. Craig Hendrick, who kicked off, will try the extra point. I'll try the field goal, rather. The kick is up, and he missed it. Oh, is that a left for Michigan? Notre Dame came down the field, Hendrick. Misses from 30 yards. Ball skidded off to the right. Now, I don't know if the hold is good or not. Let's take another look. Well, it's a sharp angle. As you know, the stripes in college are wider. It certainly looked like the hold was good. Yep. He just didn't get it over far nope. enough. The yard markers a uh, little bit wider in college. So Michigan hold. No score. John Elway leads the Broncos into Buffalo to battle Jim Kelly and the Bills. Oh, my ratty friends are here on Monday night. On ABC Sports. Again, a look at the missed field goal, and who is to say at this juncture how important this may be as time wears on, but it was very close. Maybe perhaps even grazed the upright. Point is, it didn't go through, and of course, they're kicking this year without a kicking tee. These are wet conditions, but it is a rug, and uh, he just didn't hook it to, well, to the left. I don't Henrik think. last year at this time was in high school. He's a high school senior just starting his final year in school. He's a, a true freshman kicking in his second game for the Irish. And so Michigan takes over first down at its own 20, and Michael Taylor turns and hands to Punch. And Jared Punch, the big fullback, will pick up about three yards on the carry. 
It was Horde who was the star of the Rose Bowl. It was Bowles who led the team in rushing coming into the season finale last year. Bunch has not carried the ball all that many times in his career, but when he has, he's been quite effective. McMurtry comes out now, and Desmond Howard, the redshirt freshman from Cleveland, goes into the ball game for Michigan. It is second down and seven for the Wolverines. No score at eight and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Number one, Notre Dame. Number two, Michigan. This is Horde. Pops away from one. First down, Michigan still going. 37-yard line. First down, Wolverine. One of the main concerns of Lou Holtz coming in was tackling the Wolverines. He knew they had two great tailbacks in Horn and Bowles. Kowalkowski, number 37, misses. Now watch as uh, Horn makes a couple other guys miss. He said Southern Cal, Holtz said Southern Cal was a great tackling team last year, had trouble bringing these running backs for Michigan down. Well, Stan Smigala hit him all right, but didn't wrap it. Then he just blocked him. Yep. Leroy just kept on pumping. McMurtry in motion. Taylor, a little bit of a delay, gives it again to Horde, and Horde will get it up to about the close to the 40. Ned Volkar on the top of the stack. Some of the big fellas uh, at the bottom. Dingman playing, coming off tonsillitis. There's your top 10 scores, and as you look at them, you see Nebraska is not blowing Utah away at all. But I got one for you. There's a very big one. Colorado, tough team in that big eight. That's a good football team, and I'm going to add one more to those. Oregon, third quarter, 31, Iowa, nothing. So as long as Bill Musgrave is healthy, apparently the Oregon Ducks have to be reckoned with. Second down, call it eight, all near the 40 for Michigan. time for Horde as the Irish defender pinched him. Chris Zorich, the nose tackle held his ground and the big junior from Chicago decked him. This is what Coach Bo Schembechler says his team has to do to win with their offense. Well, offensively, you know, we'll have to move the ball and control it a little bit more than, than uh, teams have done on Notre Dame. Their defense is uh, very strong and much more mobile than it's been in the past, as you know. And the secondary has uh, wonderful speed. Um, but the strength of our team really is offense. And you gotta open it up a little bit. They go to three wide outs. Michael Taylor back to throw. Down the middle he goes. Pass is good. Howard, the freshman, hauls it down at the Irish 43 first down. It was open down the middle. <laughs> have it first down as Horde comes in and McMurtry comes out for Michigan and they go back to the familiar eye formation fullback two yards Bunch runs into Zorich Chris 6'1 270 Jeff Alm 270 Bob Dahl 265 the down three for Notre Dame Here's a look at the tailbacks for Michigan, what they did last year. Over 2,000 yards from that one position and 20 touchdowns. Both outstanding players. McMurtry is back in. Second down eight. Back goes Taylor. Underthrown and late. Bunch out of the backfield was out there, but Michael was late getting the ball to him. And by then, Scott Kowalkowski, big junior from Farmington Hills, Michigan, was right there for the Irish. Taylor was looking downfield for the wide receiver who was coming to the inside of the field, similar to the third down completion he just completed a few plays back. Ball's a little bit wet, Keith. The quarterbacks are going to have trouble throwing the ball. It is now third and long, call it third and nine. A 
Taylor has time again. Now he runs out of time and will go down at the 45 as Devin McDonald, sophomore, Patterson, New Jersey, number 45, makes the tackle for the Irish. You're not going to dance around very long with this Notre Dame bunch because they have good foot speed on the defensive side of the ball. Especially in the secondary. Had good coverage downfield, and uh, that time it was really a coverage sack. He just pulled it down and took off running. So that surge of adrenaline emotion or whatever it was after they had held Notre Dame and the Irish missed the field goal is not enough to get him downfield for a score. And that's Ricky Waters waiting now for Ascona's punt. Eduardo's first effort was 29 yards. And he didn't get this one either. And it takes the Michigan bounce. And it rolls 11 yards after it hit the ground and rolls dead at the 13 yard line. It was a 32 yard punt. All right, Roger. That's the spirit of Akron. And that's Tom Barrett, the chairman of the board of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Behind him, his wife, Marilyn. And that's my favorite girlfriend on the left. Her name is Turi. And that's me sitting up there with John Moran. People were obviously taking their lives in their own hands going up there with you <laughs> flying that thing. <laughs> I'm just acting. Uh, Captain Moran was handling it. That is the state of the art blimp, the newest. 17 million? Thing looks huge. Was it was it ponderous to handle? No, like a feather. Really a spectacular gondola. It was wonderful. And it was you know, folks, there was sun was shining here yesterday. All right, here come the Irish first down from their own 13. No score, first quarter, 3.45 to go, and outside goes Waters, and Waters is tripped up across the 15 near the 17. Chris Hutchinson, a redshirt freshman, 260-pounder out of Houston, Texas, is the heir to the position played so well by Mark Messner the last four years. Top right of your screen, 97. Grunhardt is 64. He fights off the block, continues to break to the outside, and makes the tackle. Schembechler has been very pleased with Hutchinson. He's playing the wide side tackle, the one that Mesner played last year. And played All it very well. The 16-yard line, second down and seven for the Irish. Rice has not carried the ball yet. Tony gives it away again. Anthony Johnson, who had good success in the move downfield for the Irish, but shut down that time. You know, to amplify on what you said about Rice, third possession for the Irish. He hadn't carried the ball yet. Holtz knows that Michigan is, is stacked to stop Tony Rice. So he's letting all of his other guys run the ball. So maybe Michigan will forget about Tony. But be rest, rest assured that before this ball game is over with, Rice will probably have carried it 15 times. Well, he carried it one time on the quarterback sneak. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm talking about the wide stuff. Count. Yeah, the right. option stuff and the quarterback That's sweeps. Right. He spreads them out this time. Three wide outs. He's still got it. And the Wolverines get him, and that gets a run out of the crowd, and the penalty flag goes down. Look out, Bobby Abrams. Somebody might have gotten a little carried away in their exuberance, but well, they finally had a chance to get after him. Tom Quinn, the referee. Personal foul, Michigan. That's a big call right there, a big foul, and you can see Schembechler wants to know who is it on. Not only is it a, a penalty, but it's a first down. A change of possession would have occurred, but now they keep the ball. Late hit. Well, for you know, for how many days have they been concentrating? When Rice gets the ball, you guys go get him, and sure enough. That's uh, 27. No, no, no. It's uh, 97. 97. That's Hutchinson, Hutchinson. the uh, redshirt yeah. freshman. So they are geared yeah. to go get. Him. Oh, yeah, that's right. Chris just got there late. But it's a big one for the Irish. First down outside their own 36-yard line. They get off the hook. They were treed. That mistake for the Wolverines opens the door for them as Anthony Johnson runs it up close to the 40. Ball carried by Anthony Johnson. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. We got old Scrap Iron and the Buffalo Bills, Jim Kelly and his bunch, the defending AFC champions, hosting the Denver Broncos and John Elway. The action at 9 Eastern Monday, 
on ABC Sports. What a great game it was last Monday night, huh? Mm. You stay up watching that one? Are you kidding? <laughs> My age? I was there. <laughs> Inside, Jackson. Whoa, boy. No, it's ball came. I thought it was loose, but I guess not. Down he goes. Somebody really laid a lick on him. I think it was 94 Osmond. Michigan defense uh, comes in with nine starters returning from a team. As you take a look at Osmond, number 94 in the center of your screen, this defensive team was number one in the Big Ten in total defense and scoring defense and returned nine starters from that ball club. DJ from Pittsburgh. Third down, five. Time about gone, first quarter. Flash back to throw. Takes off. Got his first down. 47 yard line of Notre Dame. I tell you, Tony Rice is not a gimme. He's 200 pounds. He's tough. He's 6'1 and 200, and uh, receivers were covered downfield. It seemed as though he just kind of uh, scrambled a few yards, but he got enough to pick up the first down. Lloyd Carr, defensive coordinator for Michigan. Says that's a big problem. And limit your coverages in the secondary. You don't want to play man to man. You want everybody in zone. So in case he does run, you got a picket fence of linebackers there to, to try and make the play on it. First down for the Irish. Just outside the 47. Pitch it to Ismail. And a rocket just over midfield. Just over. And when he gets it, you hold your breath. He is a rock, right? A lot of speed. Played running back in high school. It's his second year. He's a sophomore. And the first period is done. No score. Notre Dame, Michigan. We go to the second quarter of play with no score in the ball game. Number one, Notre Dame. Number two, Michigan. These two teams met as one and two back in 1943 here at Michigan Stadium. The Irish, led by a fellow named Angelo Bertelli, won that ball game. The backfield was Creighton Miller, Jim Mello, and Julie Rakovich. The backup quarterbacks for Notre Dame, like a who's who. Johnny Lujak and Boley Denzel. Well, Notre Dame has held the ball most of that first quarter. They've got it again. Second down and seven at midfield. Ismail goes in motion. Down the line with it goes Rice, and he is caught behind the line of scrimmage by Chris Hutchinson. The kid made a mistake a few minutes ago and helped Notre Dame get off the hook, but he comes back with a big play, and here is Mike Adam Lee. Well, Keith, the one thing that Bo Schembechler stressed in the locker room before this game was about defensive pursuit on the backside. He said, we have to contain Tony Rice, and the way to do that is re with relentless backside pursuit. Offensively, we can break a big play against Notre Dame if we cut off their backside pursuit, and I think we can do it. Well, he got his backside pursuit right there. And an outstanding play by Hutchinson. Third down and seven, and Tony Rice with a deep drop and pressure coming, setting up a screen. Penalty flag is thrown. Ricky Waters has the ball. First down if the flag is against Michigan inside the 30. But hold on. Remember, there's a flag back up the hill thrown by the referee. It's called flipping. <laughs> Wipes out the play. Take a look at the right side of the screen. Look for a white jersey to hit a dark blue jersey from behind. Right there. Yep. Good call. 88. The man that was clipped is white. So that wipes out a big Irish game. And perhaps as far as big penalty calls go, evens things up. With 14 14 to go in the first half. No score. It'll be third down and 22. Look Rodney Culver back in the backfield. Look now. for Holtz to do something safe here. I would be surprised if he threw it over the middle, 15 to 20 yards. You go throw it deep, throw a screen, or run something. Got three wideouts. Eilers 
Way down at the bottom of the picture. That's a quarterback draw. Yeah. Safe. Safe. You don't want any big mistakes this early in the ball game. Lou knew his chances of making a first down weren't that good. Smart play. T.J. Osmond with another tackle, so T.J. is having a big day. Take a look at the first quarter statistics. Not much there. Time of possession is the same. Total yardage in favor of Notre Dame, but the score is nothing, nothing. And, uh, both teams just kind of feeling each other out, Keith. Jim Sexton in the punt. First time today for Jim. Trip Wellborn. Defensive back is the deep man for Michigan. Got some pressure, but he gets it away. It's a good kick. Welburn at the 19. Got some blue shirts. And gets it back across the 30 near the 32. 41 yard punt, 13 yard return, 13.05 to go. Michigan's ball first down. Uh, the shillelagh is leaning against the post. He's having a bit of a rest. <laughs> All right. Michigan coming back to the attack now. The ball is just at the 31-yard line. First down with Tony Bowles making his first appearance in the ball game at tailback. Junior, west of Michigan, 185 pounds, and he can really rip it. What he does best, make contact, slide away from you, and uh, then shake you off and go. Magala finally got him out of bounds. There's the Oregon score we gave you. Now 38 to nothing. Michigan State, George Burles' bunch. You know, Notre Dame plays five of their first six games yeah. on the road, yeah. and Michigan State is, is going down to South Bend. That's the one game out of the first six that they're playing at home. So it's like George might... Uh, Michigan State's going to be good. Yeah. They always have that good defense. Yep. Well, it's second down and seven from outside the 34 of Michigan. Holds again. And Tony, hit, goes up over the top, gets something out of it. And they'll call it the 38-yard line. Jeff Alm, Don Grimm. Don Grimm is playing the position for the Irish that Michael Stonebreaker would have played had he been eligible to play. He's out for this season. Irish lost several starters on their defense, Keith. You referred to uh, Stonebreaker. George Williams, their starting defensive tackle, is uh, academically ineligible. And then uh, Arnold Ali, starter last year as a freshman, transferred to UCLA. It is third down for Michigan and four. Taylor. You don't have much time. That probably would go down in the vernacular of the NFL as a coverage sack. Because when Taylor looked the first time, nothing, two more steps back, and by then Bob Dahl had a piece of him. Pick number 93, right over here, is going to slant way to the inside and through all the confusion and all the bodies. Look at all the bodies in there. He's going to sneak through, keep an eye on him, and makes the sack. Now they need something here out of Ascona. 29 and 32 in his first two punts. Gillette graduated. Mike handled the place kicking and the punting. A hard snap back to her. He got this one out of there pretty well. Waters comes up, calls a fair catch, runs into his own man, and almost dropped the ball. 31 yards on that punt. So he's uh, getting a little longer as the day wears on. Notre Dame's current 13-game winning streak is the longest in the nation and ranks as the seventh longest winning streak in Notre Dame history. So the Irish go to work now. Put it down at their own 39-yard line. And as Bob Greasy amused while we were away, they have not thrown deep yet. Ismail and Eilers now after that motion to the same side, and they hand it off to the up man, the fullback. And Anthony Johnson will get it up near the 44-yard line. 
about a four-yard pickup. It's interesting to note that uh, Notre Dame and Rice have had the ball 19 plays, and only one time has Tony Rice went down the line and kept the ball in an attempt to run himself. Call it second and six. Usually where he makes most of his yardage. He will. <laughs> You're right. Rice five out of 12 right now. This is Waters hit behind the line of scrimmage. Defensive play by number 26, David Key. Junior Columbus, Ohio for Michigan. What? A man from Columbus, Ohio playing for <laughs> Michigan. Take a look at the uh, offensive line. Just tosses and pitches it. Linebacker steps out and Key comes inside the linebacker and fills very nicely, slows Waters down enough until his help gets there. Third, all at six. Rice bouncing around, trying to get outside. Won't get the first down. Good defensive play by Veda Murray, a junior from Cincinnati, who got enough shoulder pad on Rice to get him out of bounds. Later Murray had a big ball game himself in the Rose Bowl. It's a lot of big plays. He had four interceptions last year for the Wolverines, and uh, he's the free safety. He uh, directs uh, all the traffic back there in center field. It looks like uh, Joe Paterno put in a tough week of coaching. His folks scored big. Sexton in the punt, 41 yards on Jim's first kick today. Back is Welburn standing at his 10. Low snap. Low kick, knuckle ball, trip for over 20 yard line, and Pollard right there. Tim Grunhard downfield to make the hit on him. 31 yard punt, a one yard return at 9.47 to go in the first half. Yesterday, 12, Michigan 10, Michigan now will try a 42 yard field goal. Brian Virgil out of BJ Dickey's hole. It's 42 yards. He hits it. They win. He misses. They lose. The kick is blocked. That block helped bring on the rule prohibiting climbing a teammate's back. And Michigan comes to the attack now. First down from their own 21-yard line. No score in the ball game. Not a whole lot of yards so far. Zip passing for the Irish so far. What a name. Oh, they did get caught in the neutral zone, I think. Jared Bunch carries the ball for Michigan. And when you get a, a veteran quarterback and a seasoned center and they catch somebody in that neutral zone, they just snap it. Greasy used to do that. He'd sneak up on people all the time. But the call goes the other way tight because end. the reason the man was in the neutral zone, somebody was wiggling on the offensive Walker. side of the ball. Tight, tight end Walker was moving. Ohio State and Southern California will get together at the Coliseum in Los Angeles at 3.30 Eastern time next week. And since we figured they're going to kick up so much dust over there in Los Angeles, we're going to play that second game in Pasadena as these Michigan Wolverines and UCLA will go at it in the Rose Bowl at 8 Eastern time. So it's a full day of Big Ten, Pac-10 action next Saturday here on ABC Sports. Never had a losing season. Michigan. That's an outstanding statistic for uh, Schembechler. Fellow right there hasn't had many. He's won everywhere he's been. All right, that backs him up. First down and 15. That's Callaway in motion. Taylor gives it to Leroy Horde, and Leroy runs into number 37, Scott Kowalkowski, who had hemmed him in and wasn't about to turn him loose. California first quarter. Well, I remember last week in Madison, Wisconsin. Wisconsin led three nothing. In the first <laughs> you, quarter. you have a very good memory. And then the wall. <laughs> Ohio State jumping all over Oklahoma State. I tell you, look out, John Cooper's Buckeyes. They're going to rattle some uh, broom handles for this year's over. Purdue, Washington, getting going out in Seattle. That's out on the West Coast. Washington Huskies opening with a win last week over A&M. Second down for Michigan. 
and still about 15. Taylor back has a lot of time, throws underneath though, and throws it rather poorly to Derek Walker. But remember, it's been raining very, very hard all day, and there's a lot of water out there. Walker caught six, uh, 15 passes last year, excuse me. George won again, 17 to 10 over Georgia Tech. Kentucky just did beat North Carolina. It looks like Mac Brown is turning things a little bit over there at Chapel Hill, doesn't it? I think he'll get that turned around. You know he's a good coach. Third down. And Michigan's got three wideouts in there now as they add uh, Desmond Howard to the wide position and take out Leroy Horde. And whistle stop him. And this will probably get your folded arms. Plays are a little bit slow coming in from the sideline. They run the plays in. They don't signal them in. I think, I think more schools and teams should signal their plays in. Of course, it takes time to teach the signals to the players involved, but especially when you're backed up at one end of the field, it takes longer to run 50 yards to get to the huddle. So they need 19 now on third down. <laughs> Taylor takes off. Fumbles the football. Notre Dame's got it. Taylor didn't put it away. When he got a hit, they slapped it loose, and the Irish make a break. Kolokoski is the guy that knocked it out of there, and I don't I couldn't pick the number who covered it. Michigan led the nation with the fewest turnovers last year. Only 11 all season long. Neither team had had a turnover. This is the seventh possession. We've had six punts and a fumble in the first big break of the game. So here comes the Irish now with a big break at the Michigan 24-yard line. Rice hands it off to the up man, and Johnson smacks him there with authority down just inside the 20. Nine minutes to go in the first half. When that thing slick, though, Bob, you've got to tuck it away. That's, that's why pocket. both coaches are, are being very conservative in their play calling. First of all, they don't have great passers. So that's, that's a given. Secondly, you know, it's a wet day. They don't want to make anything uh, crazy, no wild pitches or anything. They don't want to put themselves in a hole. The first turnover goes in Notre Dame's favor. Second out at about five. Inside the 20 for the Irish. Rice comes back, checks off, tells the backs behind him what the play is. Pull back again. Anthony Johnson running with a lot of zest. He's down near the 13 and near a first down. What Rice sees up there, Keith, at the line of scrimmage, especially on that play, as you take a look at Johnson, the fullback, who has been the workhorse, they have wide plays called, and he sees men that are contained men out on the outside on the flanks. He says, the option, no way it'll work, so I'm going to check to something back inside. And so they get the first down at the Michigan 13-yard line. They've been down here before. Inside the 10, they had it first and goal. They missed a field goal. They give it back to Anthony Johnson, and Johnson is stood up by Eric Anderson, a sophomore linebacker inside, playing with turf toe, but uh, still Anthony Johnson is down near the 10. Looks like Earl Bruce is going to get a win today. Look at Kansas. They're putting W's up at Lawrence. Sure. Ball is exactly on the 10 yard line, seven minutes and 40 seconds to go. In the first half of play, and it's second down and short seven. Tony Rice kept it. Turned it back, gets over the five. See, Rice at 200 pounds gets inside and he's very strong and he's hard as a rock. There's only 4.8 percent when they're testing him for body fat. So that'll give you some idea how tough this guy is. And he gets inside in traffic like that 
I tell you, he, he's he's tough. He's like a fullback. Well, he's a fourth runner in the backfield, is what he is. Third in the yard. Crowd getting into it a little bit. Rice with a long count, trying to draw the Wolverines, hands it off. And Anthony Johnson is going to have a first down for Notre Dame right around the Michigan two. Holtz continues to call the plays inside as Michigan has got their defense stacked to stop the option in the wide plays. And Lou is being very patient, running Johnson up the gut inside the five yard line. He sends Culver into the backfield now. Another 220 pounder, number five. Rice has got it outside Culver and great play by Bobby Abrams, number 24, the outside linebacker. Talk about good defense. This is just solid, good defense. Rice, as you take a look at Abrams, who was a defensive back a couple of years ago, switched to linebacker. Got his weight up to 230. Watch this play. Rice is going to make a good decision there. Now he's hit, and at the last minute makes another good decision. Gets the ball out to Culver, and there are Welburn and uh, Abrams both there to make the tackle. Time called at 5.51 to play in the first half. No score yet. So the Huskers getting a little breathing room against the Utes. The football squarely on the two. Irish call the timeout. Anthony Johnson stays in there at the fullback. Culver is in. Eilers comes out of the huddle and goes as the wide out to the bottom of the picture. And look at this. They go back to a one-back set. First time they've shown that today. Does that mean option rice? Nope. Johnson the fullback. And look out. Abrams got there almost too late. But Mike Evans and J.J. Grant make the stop. And it brings up third and goal from the one. There's no way that, that Holtz is going to throw the ball down here. He's trying to spread them out. He had two tight ends, two wide receivers, spreads the defense out, and opens up maybe a seam inside to get Johnson or Rice into the end zone. Rice, touchdown. Penalty flag. Oh, the phone. Linesman threw that flag. Irish. Illegal motion. Anthony Johnson I may have started a tad too soon. Watch Johnson right behind. I don't think he moved too soon. That's awfully close. Who oh, called it? The umpire called it? Well, the linesman called it, which uh, makes me think it was a linesman. A line, uh, somebody along the line today. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I don't think uh, Johnson seemed to Johnson. move right when the ball was yeah, snapped. Yeah, he did, didn't it? Five-yard penalty brings it back to the six-yard line, where it is third down and goal. Now. Let's see what Mr. Rice does. He's got Waters back in the backfield as they go to the wishbone. Rice rolls it back to throw it. Does throw. Johnson, touchdown. No flag.
situation. Safe pass. A Pull bullet, back. wasn't it? He really zipped it. The kick is good by Hendrick. And so at 5.05 in the first half, the Irish take the lead 7 to nothing. Bo Schembechler leads Rose Bowl champion Michigan back to Pasadena to meet Pac-10 power UCLA. It's a college football special next Saturday night on ABC Sports. Anthony Johnson, who has done so much of the heavy work so far in the ball game, getting the pass and scoring the touchdown. Here's Johnson right here in the middle. He's a fullback. Watch when the play starts. This tight end's coming over here. This back will spread wide this way. This back goes to the top, and Johnson, everybody forgets about him, is going to sneak right into this area right here. And Rice, as he rolls to his left, is going to let everybody clear out. Johnson sneaks into the open area. And it was a nice call and a nice play, nice throw by Rice. Wasn't a, it wasn't a gambling type of throw. He didn't throw it into coverage in the end zone. A little check down for a touchdown. And Notre Dame kicks it off. Hendrick showed a big leg, shows it again. Knocks it all the way down to the three, where it is taken by Desmond Howard. He's got a hole. To the 40. Down he goes at the 41. He was one step from being long gone. And you got a flag somewhere out there because the folks are talking at the 41. Procedure, Irish. Are they going to make them kick it again or are they going to take it at the 41-yard line? Not so sure I wouldn't be tempted to take it where it is. Remember, in coach on the standing line, it's declined. Let's go. Howard takes this ball. He's coming right the entire way. Good blocking up in front of him. The nice thing about this is the return blockers up in front of him are not right next to him. They went out, got their block so they could get some green uh, turf between he so he can make his cut. And so Michigan having been stung by an Irish touchdown. First down from their own 41, Michael Taylor hands the ball off to Jarrett Bunch. Bunch will have a couple of yards, and that's all. This is a split crew of officials. Tom Quinn of the Big Ten, the referee. Uh, the other officials are from the Central Independent Football Association. Ron Abdow is the umpire. Head linesman Tom Ransom. Line judge Pat Radisic. Field judge Otto Cole. Side judge Carter Lohr. And the back judge is Tom Herbert. That's just about a two-yard pickup, just short of the 44-yard line, since they started just short of the 42-yard line. Four minutes and 18 seconds, clock running now, you see there. Taylor to Tony Bowles. They'll give Bowles progress to the 47. Halftime, we'll have the Woodward Stakes. Belmont Park, easy gore, a considered uh, choice. There are those, obviously, who disagree with the considered choice. <laughs> well, who do you like? <laughs> I don't know enough to be uh -huh. astute about it. Uh -huh. Proper reality, how's that? <laughs> You're getting some coaching up here. <laughs> Three and a half minutes to go in the first half now. Michigan trying to retort for the Irish score. Third down, they need four yards. Michael Taylor will quick stand up, shoots it down the pipe. Good! Inside the 40, pass caught by Callaway. Chris, the junior from Chicago. Just going to be a slant. Callaway goes about five yards. Nice throw between the linebacker and 15, Terrell. The free safety. First catch today for Callaway. And first down, Wolverines, Irish 39-yard line. Wishbone. Reverse. Howard, the speedster, didn't get the block on the corner. 
Number 29, Stan Smagala, would not be taken out. Got a little help from Kowalkowski. But still, you see the reason why they like to have Desmond Howard on the field. He is a burner. It's going to be a reverse. The ball's coming this way. Here's Howard. Watch Muscala up here at the top of the screen. Normally, with the action away, everybody, all the backs going away, you would trail the play. Smagala sees it coming all the way, stays at home. Fifth-year senior makes a nice play. It was fourth-year senior, excuse me. Second down, four. Baylor going deep in zone, Callaway knocked off the ball. Penalty flag down. Terrell ran into him, and they're going to call Pat for interference. Terrell's playing the ball. The ball hung up there. Callaway was behind him, and he just ran into it. You know that uh, Pat's thinking, I can accept that thing. That's a wounded goose hanging yeah. up there. Well, the ball's free when it's in the air. Terrell used to be a wide receiver a couple years ago. That ball does not have offense or defense on it. It's anybody's ball. Yeah, that, you can argue about that one on both sides of the well, table, couldn't you? The, the, the deal is, they can say that the, the uh, Terrell impeded the process or the access uh, of the receiver to get to the football. But it's, but it's who's looking back for the ball, you know? Is the other guy looking back and could he have caught it? Certainly was a catchable pass. Well, either one could have caught it. I don't think there's any question about yeah. that. In college football, it's a 15-yard penalty and a first down for Michigan at the Irish 18-yard line. Well, if Taylor puts a little more snap on it, it's touchdown, too, probably, huh? But he got up in the wind. Wind swirling around. It's not a lot of wind, but they're just enough to be a problem. And Michael Taylor keeps it and turns it upfield, and the ball comes loose again. That's Taylor's second fumble of the day, but it looked like a Michigan man pounced it. Like Everett, 51, the center. Yep, that's who got it. Steve Everett, 280 pound red shirt freshman from Miami. Well, option turns it back up inside. And it looks like he was down anyway, but uh, Everett gets on it just for good measure. And you mark it just short of the 14 yard line. They've got to go to the eight for the first down. I'm going to go back and take a look at that interference call. <laughs> Just a minute. <laughs> judgment, judgment, judgment. Outside goes Horrid. Penalty flags, face mask, no question about it. Juan Francisco had a hold of the face mask. Right hand comes around the back. He didn't yank it. If he'd have pulled it, I don't know if he did it. <laughs> Todd Light he came up there pulled. covered it he up. Says, I'm going to hold on to that face mask until <laughs> my friends get here. Yeah. <laughs> Juan came over uh, in his freshman year. He was a uh, running back. Yeah, outstanding running back in high school. Five yards, however, inadvertent face mask call does not provide automatic first down, and in distance it does not provide a first down. You're looking at second down and a half a yard for Michigan. Now you got two tight ends. Now we go to belly up and go a little toe-to-toe -to -toe stuff here. Michael Taylor gives the ball to Tony Bowles. Got a lot of friends in front of him heading for the flag out of bounds. Six. Yard line of Notre Dame, and that will be a first down. Juan Francisco got him out of bounds. It looked for a moment if Tony Bowles could plant and come back inside, he would have scored, but he just couldn't get a plant, and he just took the ankle. 
Bowles likes is a sprinter type. He likes to run to the outside, likes to get around the corner. Horde, the other tailback, is stronger, much bigger, weighs 220, whereas Horde weighs, I mean, Bowles weighs 190. He likes to run inside, Horde likes to run. Horde inside, Bowles outside. First and goal, Michigan, Notre Dame. Six yard line and uh, tight end on the right side was moving long before the snap. Derek Walker, he'll cost him five. You got to relax and hold your discipline. Right there, the tight end, number 89, Derek Walker. So they were sitting down at the six first and goal. Now they're back at the 11. It's the opening game for Michigan. Notre Dame played a couple of weeks ago and beat Virginia. Good point. Good point. You got those those little things creep into your uh, offense and your defense. The personal fouls, the late hits by Hutchinson earlier in the ball game, and offensively you're moving a little bit too soon. Notre Dame is leading seven to nothing. 46 seconds to play in the first half. This Michigan's first real serious threat. Taylor, option, up the middle he goes. He runs into a lot of white folks wearing white shirts. Wide, for look at the size of these guys. Now, you talk about people who can run. Here's Don Grimm, who is at 230 pounds, and Don looks like a little guy out there. I mean, these, as Dick Vitale would say, are wide bodies, boy. They are big, and they are quick. And you've got 34 seconds to go in the first half. ABC's College Football, brought to you by today's Chevrolet, who invites you to see why nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. And by Big A, the first letter in auto parts, and your local Big A store. The ball is at the nine-yard line, second down and goal. And the longer you watch, the more entertained you get for the play along the trenches. 265, 270, 270 for the Irish, the three down guys, and 290, 280, 295, 340 in the middle for Michigan. But the big Michigan front is just simply not knocking them off the ball. And of course, that five yard penalty is, has stung them. It is second down and goal from the nine yard line. This is Leroy Hort, throws the ball. Complete. Terrific play by Dewan Francisco. The pass intended for Derek Walker on a throw by Horde and Francisco spoiled the touchdown try. Not very pretty. <laughs> not, not very pretty at all. He's lucky he wasn't picked off. He had him if he could throw it out a little bit, but uh, you know, uh, you gotta you gotta be that'd be a tough throw for a quarterback. <laughs> he just a running it. back. Shot put it in. That ball was, that's right, shot put it. That's a good way to put it. And so it is third down and goal, Michigan from the nine. It's tough to score offensively when you don't have a lot of room. The defense can really sock it in down here. Taylor loops it to the corner. Touchdown! Callaway, Michigan on the board. point out of Ken Solom's hole. Steve Everett snaps it. Hold is good. The kick gets the crossbar of the upright on the left-hand side. So Carlson misses the extra point. And this was a worry for Bo Schembechler. He did not think that his kicking game was solid going into this ball game. Mike Gillette the all time leading score kick wise for Michigan graduated last year. 
And there's a problem. There you go, right here, man-to-man -man coverage. Here's uh, McMurtry. He's going to break in here, and he's just going to swing to the outside. It's an excellent throw by Taylor. The two receivers cross. There's man coverage. This is good stuff here. Schembechler going for it on the uh, down before with the halfback throwing. No good. Comes out with another play. And the reaction of Taylor says, I can throw that ball. Let me have that ball. Don't let them halfbacks throw that ball. And you've got 25 seconds remaining in the first half of play. So the missed extra points. No T, remember. And under difficult conditions, it may be that it's showing up a bit. Who's to know? J.D. Carlson will kick it off. He's a sophomore out of Tallahassee, Florida. Seven to six. Notre Dame by one. I got a feeling Bob points are going to be awfully precious. Yeah, that's a big miss. Game. That's a big miss. Well, these two defensive units are stubborn. Down the middle, bouncing ball. Picked up, bubbles. Ismail finally picks it up on the 16. And he is decked at the 23. And you've got 18 seconds to go. Mike Adamley from the field. Well, Keith, let's keep our fingers crossed in this one. I know it was something that Bob was worried about. That bad weather we had this morning has not been a factor in this game. Because of the light breeze down here, the field is practically dry, and let's hope it stays that way. You know, the second half could be a, almost a normal half uh, as far as uh, quarterbacks and uh, running backs are concerned with a, with a dry ball. The field is draining. It looks like very well from up here in my second half. The water may be off the field completely. Yeah, the center of the field is quite yeah, dry. Yeah, you can see it from Still up here. On the side. Here's the pitch going to Ragib Ismail, the speedster. And rockets out around the 21-yard line and taken down for loss of a yard or so on the play. And it uh, looks like they're going to let the clock run out now. The Irish had three timeouts. But they're going to go to the clubhouse leading by one, 7-6 to six, over the Michigan Wolverines before over 100,000 votes at Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor. About what we expected, close and tough. Now let's join Roger Twybo. Well, at least we've got him in the can, as they say, right? <laughs> okay, Mr. Belvedere. That'll be fun. All right, Mike Adamley right now. Well, Keith, at halftime here at uh, Michigan Stadium, they honored Michigan's NCAA National Basketball Champions and the man who made Bo Schembechler, athletic director Bo Schembechler, a genius in his words, Steve Fisher. What about the prospects for the upcoming season? I know you're still basking in the glow of what happened last March. I think this guy, Ramil, is the guy that made Bo Schimbeckler a genius with the, the two free throws that he sank to beat Seton Hall. We're excited about uh, the prospects of our season. We're tremendously proud of the accomplishments that our team had this past winter, and we're going to be ready to defend that championship. I know back in March during the Final Four, Bo came in and gave a, a, a pep talk to the team. Has he asked you to do anything similar to his football team? Bo needs no help. I guarantee you they've got the pep talk to play the second half right here. Ramil, what about next season, quickly? Well, um, we're working very hard at the moment, and you know, I think we're going to have a very nice team coming back, and you know, with a great coach like Coach Fisher, we should. Well, best of luck, and incidentally, November 25th, it's when it all starts. Michigan opens up the season in the Hall of Fame Classic in Springfield, Massachusetts, against Arizona, right after our Ohio State-Michigan game. Keith? And incidentally, no university has ever won NCAA basketball championship and then been voted number one in football. Never. Here are the stats. Total plays are almost uh, identical. Notre Dame with two more. The time of possession is uh, almost the same. And the total yards is almost the same. One turnover for uh, Michigan. The Notre Dame touchdown came at the end of the drive here as Tony Rice zips this pass to Anthony Johnson covering six yards. Point was good, and the Irish led seven to nothing. Then Michigan came back, helped by this call against the Irish secondary. Pat Terrell, number 15, bumps into Chris Callaway. The call goes against Terrell. And that helped uh, Michigan along the way, but then the Wolverines damaged themselves some with one uh, penalty call. But then Michael Taylor to Callaway behind Smigala, touchdown, but Michigan missed the 
the extra point. And Bob, that has become sort of a black cloud for the moment for the Wolverines. Shim Beckler said that he's going to miss uh, Mike Gillette, the outstanding kicker, and he has not replaced him to this point. And Michigan will kick off the Notre Dame. The Irish had won the toss and elected to defer, and now they start from the 12 with Ismail up the middle. He is gone, unless there's a flag behind him. No flags, touchdown. Extra point try now as a fresh ball comes onto the field. They call him Rocket. And you just saw why. He led the nation in kickoff returns last year at two for touchdowns. Sexton holds. Hendrick kicks it. 14 to 6. Notre Dame. That missed extra point looks even bigger now. We mentioned at the opening that Michigan had good special teams, but Notre Dame was the best in the country. Ishmael, number 25, is going to take it right up the middle. His blockers give him some room, and there's speed to burn right here. The kicker is going to make a poor effort. Ishmael runs a 4-2-8, we are told. The last time anybody returned to kickoff, against Michigan for a touchdown was 1957. Ron Engel of Minnesota. And they have just been stunned by that fellow. Notre Dame last year at South Bend had a punt return for a touchdown. This year they get a kickoff return. Special teams so very important in this uh, in the ball game. How fast can you run in full gear with the football under his arm? Well. Fast enough. 11 seconds to go 89 yards. How's that? He used 11 seconds. So the clock starts once he gets it. He, he had also had to run some traffic through right, some traffic. Right, he had to slope some of the big off the big uglies up there. Block it for him. That's right. <laughs> All right, Hendrick will kick it off. Howard and Bowles are deep for Michigan. This is Howard. He's the Michigan speedster at the seven. He had a crack the last time. He slides down as he tried to cut back. He had Horde on the sidelines and Bunch on the sidelines. And as he was trying to cut toward the friendly colors, he lost his foot. First half leaders for Michigan. Taylor was five of six and a touchdown. Not much rushing, and Callaway was the leading receiver with a touchdown. The ball is on the 31 of Michigan. They come out with Michael Taylor, Tony Bowles, and now it's Leroy Horde and Jared Bunch in the backfield. With Derek Walker at tight end. McMurtry and Callaway are the wideout people. And the handoff on a little delay goes to Horde, and Horde runs into Ned Bolcar, and the big guy from Phillipsburg, New Jersey, brings him down. Bocar, number 47, leader on this defense, just slides to his right, doing what he's supposed to do, fighting off the lineman, makes the hit in the hole, gets some help, maybe for a yard. Nice play. He was a captain, the leader, led this team in tackles two years ago, had some injury problems, and didn't play a lot last year. Second down and nine from the 32. Tight end Walker goes in motion. Ball is handed off to Horde, and the Irish now pumped up. And uh, they are swarming right now. Bob Dole, that hit. 
is Ismail. Played as a true freshman last year, as I mentioned. Ran two back for touchdowns. He's another Pennsylvanian. That got away from Joe. And, uh, you know, when Mike that and the guys <laughs> really, really picks up your team and really deflates the other oh, team. You come out from halftime, you know what you want to do, and then that happens, changes the whole complexion of what you thought you were going to be facing. On third and eight, Taylor back to throw. Couldn't find anybody. And they get him short of the first down at about the 37, 38 yard line as Bolcar, who had dropped off in the short zone, comes up to make the hit on Taylor, and Taylor is shaken up. He got hit pretty good. In an effort to make the first down, he didn't get down the way he wanted to, and the linebacker came up and hit him pretty good. He's going to scramble. He's going to get past Dole, number 93. But in an attempt to get about five or six more yards, which is what he needs, Bolcar, 47, gets a good shot at him in the back. Well, that shoulder that was hurt the last time for Taylor last year, the throwing shoulder has been sore. And it looks to me like that that's where he took the blow. It was on that right shoulder. All right, they're still working on Michael Taylor. Ricky Waters is the deep man. Let's go back to a conversation I had with him uh, yesterday and talking about his explosiveness on special teams. It's, it's like you're, you're going to war and you can hear it like bombs going off around you because you can hear the pads crack and you can hear the guys going in and when it goes all the way you know that everyone did their job because they, you have to in order to take it all the way back all right one bomb has gone off already against michigan let's see what happens here here's ascona to punt it he gets a little more on it this time knocks that ball back to the 16 yard line and here goes waters and down he goes good coverage downfield by brian townsend the linebacker number 45. That was a 48-yard punt and a two-yard return at 12.42 to go in the third quarter. The Irish leading in the ball game by a score of 14 to 6 as a result of Ismail's 89-yard sprint to open the second half of play. This is Roger Twibell in New York, University of Miami, deep against California. Craig Erickson rolling out, finds Shannon Crowell, two yards on the touchdown pass. That made it 17 to three. That is the score at halftime right now at the Orange Bowl. Let's go back to Keith Jackson. Okay, Roger. Michael Taylor walking around. I think he just got a heavy blow in the back. Uh, Elvis Gerback, number 15, the backup quarterback, been warming up. He's the redshirt freshman from Willoughby Hills, Ohio, but I expect Taylor may be the man to come back. Right now, the Michigan defense, the one's got the heat on it because the Irish have pumped up and they lead 14 to 6 and they've got the ball at their own 18 yard line. Tony Rice hands it off to the up man, the fullback, and it's Anthony Johnson who's put in a full day's work already. And he gets the ball up to around the 21. Johnson is the leading carrier in the ball game, yardage wise and carries. Take a look at the first half statistics. Rice only threw one pass for a touchdown. Johnson with 14 carries and 63 yards. Culver checks into the backfield now at the tailback position for Notre Dame. And he's got the ball. And the Wolverines have him as Brent White with the first contact. And they drop him for a loss. Loss of about a yard. Take a look at the offensive and defensive line play. 97 is Hutchinson. Gets a piece of it after White, number 88, comes around and makes the tackle. Third and seven. Double wide, top of the picture. Reverse. Here comes Ismail. 
You'd think he might be a little winded, but he didn't look like it. He came whistling around the corner and got it up to a 28-yard line. Bobby Abrams and Beta Murray on the hit, and he's close to a first down. They've switched Ismail from a split receiver, which he was last year, to the flanker. They do that so he can get more involved in reverses and running out of the backfield, a la Tim Brown a few years ago, the Heisman Trophy winner. They want to get the hands in Ismail's hands more often, and they can do it if they can get him in flank. And he just picked up a first down. Ball mark just beyond the 28. And Colmer in the backfield with Johnson. Colmer pokes over the right side. Fumbles the football. Notre Dame's going to get it. Michigan, two Michigan men had a piece of it, couldn't hold it, and the Irish come up with it. Just sure the white shirt got there in time. Well, that right there tells you who got on the football. You know, recovering footballs, recovering balls is, is, is an art. I mean, you just don't recover, you just don't fall on it. You gotta wrap your uh, body around it, fall around the ball, especially on artificial turf when the ball is gonna bounce everywhere. Culver gets through the line Ball is just shaking loose right there. Mm. Key has a chance at it. Eilers gets it. So Pat gets it, and the Irish keep it, and they've got another first down. And all of a sudden, they're camped out at their own 44-yard line, and Ricky Waters, the speed screw, is back in there. But they stay with the power game because they have found a hole in the middle. And they just keep pounding at it. Anthony Johnson moves the ball. Over the 47. You got 10 20 to go, third quarter. Notre Dame leading Michigan 14 to 6. Special teams providing one of the two touchdowns. Second down, call it six. A step away, perhaps, from really breaking something big. Got to the 49, brought down by Tripp Wellborn. Tony Rice, Woodruff, South Carolina. How was it that he came to go to Notre Dame? He told me this. Coach Holtz was with me in uh, Minnesota, and I was pretty good friends with Ricky Foggy, and he took me just looking to Minnesota when Coach Holtz left to go to Notre Dame. I just took interest in that and just decided to get away and try to make something of myself. Hadn't done a bad job either. <laughs> One of the most popular players on the team, if not the most. Third down and four for the Irish. Big play here. Penalty flag flies. Short of the first down as Johnson carries. Referee through the flag. Hey, hey, hey. Tom Quinn. Penalty, five yard Notre Dame. Illegal motion. Colorado Buffaloes jump in Illinois pretty good today. Take a look at the man next to Rice on his left. I don't know, it's, uh, he looked like he moved at the time the ball was snapped also. He'll decline it. That brings up fourth down, so Sexton will come in to punt. And this time, Chris Callaway will go deep for Michigan. So they're, they're still searching around through their roster, trying to find all the pieces for their kicking game. And Michigan needs something big now from special teams because they're, they're eight points down. And Sexton hits another beauty. And Callaway looks where he is, standing out on the 12, backs up a yard, and calls a fair catch. And the Wolverines will have the ball first down at their own 39-yard line. And now the next... Uh, object of concern will be whether or not Michael Taylor answers the call at quarterback. This is Roger Twybell in New York, ninth ranked Arkansas in their season opener at Fayetteville and quarterback Quinn Grovey, 12 yards for the touchdown against Tulsa, 26 to seven. That game in the fourth quarter right now and a final in now from Lincoln, Nebraska has held on to beat Utah 42 to 30. Let's go back to Keith Jackson. 
And the big news here is that Elvis Gerback, a redshirt freshman, has gone in at quarterback. Michael Taylor did not answer the bell. And Michigan's backed up on its own 12-yard line, trailing 14 to 6. So there's young Gerback, a redshirt freshman, 6 foot 3, 220 pounds, from Willoughby Hills, Ohio. And he'll hand it away to Leroy Horde, and Horde will lose a couple of yards. Stopped just short of the 10 by Kowalkowski on the first hit. Here's Mike Adamley. What about Michael Taylor? Well, Keith, it wasn't Michael's shoulder, but he, he took a helmet in the back. He is now very, very stiff. He is wrapped. He is being iced down. Will he come back in this game? Will offensive coordinator Gary Moeller walk over and talk to Michael? And then walked away and just shook his head. So, Keith, it looks very doubtful that Michael Taylor will be back in the second half. Mm. Yeah, that's tough. If there was one weakness on this offensive team uh, coming into the ballgame, it was a quarterback. Taylor was the only guy. Gerbach coming into spring drills or into the fall drills was fourth on the depth chart. I'll go into it in a minute. Gerbach back now to throw the football. Gets the pass away, and it's under throw. He had his man out there, Jared Bunch, but he was a little bit short with it. Coming back from last year, Demetrius Brown, and Michael Taylor were both senior quarterbacks coming in. Demetrius Brown flunked out uh, academically, didn't qualify to play this year. The third quarterback, Wilbur Odoms, also had some academic problems and now is on the roster but lost the spot to Gerbach right here. So a spot where both thought he was very deep now is down to his number four quarterback. And he's in pretty deep trouble right now on third down and 12 from his own 10 yard line. The Irish fire, and here they come. Down the middle, pass. Good pass. He had something on it, except it was a bit off target intended for McMurtry. Craig was open down the middle, and young Gerbach misfired. Well, Gerbach is a much better thrower, just hasn't played. Much better than Taylor, just hasn't played. And they may be better off in the long run in this ballgame if he gets his feet on the ground and gets into the game if they have to catch up they may be better off with him throwing the football eight minutes and ten seconds to go in the third quarter and Michigan's got to punt it away now and their kicking game hasn't been anything to write home about today look for a return here 29 32 31 as Kona gets it out his last one Good high hang time on it. And this one is belted up in the air, but it hangs up there. And Steve Bellis, who had gone back there, yeah, Bellis right, being Ellis. a former quarterback, gone back because of, he wanted somebody to handle it safely. One of the busiest places on the campus today in the area was uh, right here, Mo Sports Shop. They were fine sweatshirts. After the uh, basketball team, Steve Fisher's basketball team won the championship. They sold more memorabilia and special shirts, t-shirts, what have you, in a week than they normally sell them. But they sold a lot of parkas and rain gear in there this morning. Yeah, I'll bet they did too. <laughs> All right, Notre Dame with an opportunity just short of the Michigan 45-yard line. First down, and Rice drops back to throw. He wants it big now. Down the middle. Just off his hands. That was good coverage by Key and Murray. It was a foot race all the way, and it was Murray who got a hand on it. And a good call by Holtz. You're on the Michigan side of the 50-yard line. You got him down. The momentum is in your favor. You send your speedy receiver down, field play action. It's a nice throw, just good coverage by Michigan. That's the second Irish pass has been a sparing weapon today. On second and ten, Rice options down the line and keeps it. And picks up a first down. I mean, they had a hold of him. But he just broke the grip. Been kind of a gray, gloomy day for Captain John Moran of Spring, Texas, and the brand new state of the art high tech blimp, Spirit of Akron, honoring the citizens of Goodyear's corporate headquarters in Akron, Ohio. Rice now, eight carries, 36 yards. First down, Michigan 32. 
And the big guy in the middle, Anthony Johnson, with it. Miami jumping out 14 points over uh, California. But look what Colorado has done to Illinois. And Washington is doing a tap dance on Purdue, too. So those two teams are going to play Colorado Washington 30th of the month. Penn State got it going today. Oregon's another one that made some news today with a 44 to 6 win over Iowa. Other scores there. Georgia opening its season. Mahalko, Ryan Mahalko, number 35, checks in now as Notre Dame goes to the wishbone on second down and six. And Rice keeps it. And another first down for Notre Dame to the 21 yard line. And now they're starting to cut them up. They've gone now full board to the option game. Mahalko shows up. He's a good blocker. Ron Gutekunst, Minnesota Gophers getting a win at the start today. Wisconsin getting a win. And BYU, having lost to Washington State last week, they bounce back against Navy. And Rutgers beats Boston College. It's one of those kind of seasons, I think, that uh, nothing seems secure week to week. This is Waters. Waters bounces off, fumbles the football. Who's got it? It was laying around, looked like on the ground before somebody realized it was loose. And Ricky apparently went down to get it. Brent White, 88, made the first hit. White uh, recovering, uh, recovered last year from a serious automobile accident two years ago. Some people thought he would never play again, but had knee surgery and came back and is playing very well. It'll be second down, call it nine, just short of the 20. And Culver is in that wishbone now for Notre Dame, number five. And the ball is handed off to Ismail. The flanker back, sometimes the wideout will step into the backfield. Sometimes it's Eilers and sometimes it's Ismail's joining the wishbone alignment. And Ragib got the ball down to about the 15 of Michigan on that carry to bring up third down and four. Ismail is 5'10 and 175, so I think he likes running inside with those biggins very much, but uh, he was a running back in high school. He can handle it. 5'20 to go, third quarter. This is Culver. He turns in there with some authority, doesn't he, at 220 pounds? But uh, they've stopped him short. And this is going to bring a decision time for uh, Notre Dame as they come up on fourth down and a yard. There's your bell tower on the campus. And as you pull back, you find Michigan Stadium. We haven't gotten an attendance number yet, but we do know it's over 100,000 for the 86th consecutive time. And so the field goal unit will come in now for Notre Dame. Hendrick in to try. The ball will be put down at the 20. A little late getting it down, but the kick is up and the kick is good. So he was wide right from the 20, and now he has hit a 30, and the Irish lead is 17 to 6. Of the Big Ten roars Ohio State to tackle their traditional Rose Bowl rival, the Trojans of Southern Cal, on ABC's College Football next Saturday. The Fighting Irish have it their way right now, controlling the tempo of the ball game. That explosion to start the second half, an 89 yard sprint by Ismail for a touchdown and now a field goal, and they lead by 11 with 4.28 to play in the third quarter. And the Michigan Wolverines have lost their quarterback, Michael Taylor. They've got the redshirt freshman, Elvis Gerbach, in there. They need a break. I don't think Michigan has recovered from that uh, opening kickoff of the second half. And then to compound it, like you said, they lost their quarterback. Hendrick hits it. And Tony Bowles takes it at the 16-yard line. Oh, look at this. Tony is thrown out of bounds. Over the 40, Juan Francisco fetching him out. Yeah, 
they don't give him the 40 they give him the 39 and Gerbach is out there Taylor taking a helmet to the back sore and stiff so first down from the 39 give it a horde full car hits Ford knocks him back Ned from Phillipsburg New Jersey and he put a solid hit on him right there when you lose your quarterback such as Michigan has done it gives a sense of insecurity first of all to the entire team and in, in particular to the offensive line and the receivers that are out there on the field when the new quarterback comes into the huddle everybody tries to pick him up but in the back of their mind they're saying oh geez do we have a chance to win this ball game this kid's never played in a college game before and I think the longer he's in there the more confident he will become and the rest of the team will second down and eight gonna throw it McMurtry down the middle of the field number one makes the catch number one makes the tackle Todd White pretty pass he's six five receivers going to clear out over here and McMurtry's going to come in and square in over the middle little play action to hold the linebackers and good sidelines for Gerbach as he play action fakes no no problem with the uh, rush at all and wide open in the middle of the field that'll do a lot for his confidence and the confidence of that offensive group who knows we may this may a star may be born here you don't know Walter Mitty lurking in the shadows always 39 yard line first down little delay he's going to put it up again and throws it to bunch he had a chance to get it to bunch but what he was more concerned about than anything else was preventing the sack because Devin McDonald had a hold of it he was after him, climbing up his back no question he was <laughs> It wasn't a matter of here in the hoof beats, it was a matter of the claws tearing your shirt off. Howard the speedster comes in and wide out now. Desmond Howard brings a play for Michigan. McMurtry comes out. It is second down and ten for the Wolverines at the Irish 39. Three minutes to go in the third quarter. Notre Dame leading 17 to 6. Run it. Well, there's nothing going on here as Jared Bunch is being bounce from pillar to post and back again but there is a penalty flag and it came I think out of the umpire's pocket that oftentimes means holding so Michigan will pay the penalty here and next Monday night ABC's NFL Monday Night Football will offer the Buffalo Bills at home and Jim Kelly against John Elway and the Denver Broncos both of them winning to get underway. Buffalo escaping Miami with a win last week. Denver hasn't done too well on Monday night, especially on the road. But Elway is probably or is one of the best. There's a bit of a changing of the guard out of Denver too, in many many respects. Holding on the offense at the end of the run. Repeat second down. That'll back them up. Ten. And the clock shows 250 to go in the third quarter. Jim Beckler said that he was going to open things up a little bit more this year. Even though he had some good runners, he needs to throw now because Notre Dame has effectively shut down that run that he wanted to dominate the offensive line of scrimmage with. Matt Murtry got it. How do you do? down at the Irish 26. And it's 6-5. The tight lines are great. Here's McMurtry. He's going to go down, release inside, and break back to the outside. It's a double zone. The corner will stay short. This is not an easy pass to throw. McMurtry releases inside. The corner is held up by the second man out of the backfield. Those are two big time completions that yep. young man has thrown. Pat Farrell was there and McMurtry caught it right in front of him and Greg's a good sized guy himself. 6'2", 205. They run it. Good bunch. 
Bo's determined that Jared Bunch is going to get his fair share, isn't he? Oh, we talked about him all week long. Yep. He hasn't been able to break anything of any consequence, and now we see the penalty flag. We had a bit of a scuffle. It took Nebraska a while. Mitchell had a pretty good day for Utah. Split crew, remember, so that always requires more conference and uh, sometimes uh, disagreement on the interpretation. The man in the white hat is Tom Quinn, the referee, and he's a big tenor. Let's hear him here. Turn it on, Tom. Oh, well, he was getting all kinds of static from the Michigan side. Yeah, he said, Bo, 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 he said, just wait a minute. <laughs> it's coming back. Wait I'm finished. Calm down. He yeah. said, dead ball foul, personal foul, both <laughs> sides. <laughs> He's, and in the meantime, the umpire was marching the ball uh, against Michigan, and Bo said, and Quinn said, wait a minute, wait a minute, Bo. We have, hey, Ronnie, Ronnie. Hold it now. We got to get this thing straightened out. <laughs> Oh, me. We have a personal foul on the offense, a personal foul on the defense, both live ball fouls. It's an automatic first down. That all comes after that completion and then the run, so. Now, still first Lou down. wants to be. No, uh, no, that shouldn't be first down because no. there was a running play. He said live ball foul, but they're should offsetting. Be, should be second down. <laughs> Michigan trying to jump at the referees over talking to Luna, who is unhappy, wants an explanation. <laughs> Michigan trying to step the ball and go after him. So now the Wolverines are going to go back into a huddle. And the negotiation continues. There's a good look at two of the top coaches in the country right there. <laughs> Lou's got a smile about it. I mean, he, it's a big game, but still, he's loose. Shem Beckler in his 27th year at Michigan and Holtz in his fourth year at Notre Dame. Two of the premier coaches in the country. Okay, now, we have... Uh concluded the plenary session and we'll proceed on to the main order of business here at the 26 yard line and the down marker stays at one. It's Gary Moeller there the offensive coordinator assistant head coach talking with Gerbach. There he is uh, take a look at him talking with Bo. All right first down at the Irish 26 yard line with Bunch and Bowles split backs behind Gerbach. Elvis back to throw it, throws it underneath. The ball is caught by Bowles out of the backfield, and Tony will get down inside the 20. And 2.20 to go in the third quarter with the Irish leading 17 to 6. Number one and number two. These two teams met in that posture at the Bowles back in 1943. The Irish won that one behind Angelo Bertelli and Johnny Lujak. And Bowley Dancewitz and Creighton Miller. I have to mention Creighton. Otherwise, I'll get a sack full of mail. Creighton's golf game was usually in pretty good shape. <laughs> yeah. 150 to play third quarter, and Gerbach back to throw it again. He looks, he's that little flip inside, and it doesn't work. As Leroy Horde takes that little shovel inside and Up goes in down there. right on the 20 yard line. Let's pause five seconds right here to let our ABC stations tell you who they are. Channel 7, KABC TV, Los Angeles. Notre Dame getting a touchdown return of 89 yards from Ragib Ismail to open the second half, and it shocked Michigan. And just now, Michigan is trying to, is beginning to show signs of recovery, but they're having to do it behind backup quarterback Elvis Gerbach. The Irish lead 17 to 6. And Gerbach's pass is good to the tight end Walker. And Walker's going to have a first down at the 13 yard line of Notre Dame. How come your voice level picks up about three octaves when they throw it to the tight end? Because they ought to throw it to the <laughs> tight end more. I promised Derek Walker eight balls yesterday. 
That's the second, third, that's the third time I guess he's seen it today. Gerbach has hit four passes in a row, Bob. He has, and the thing that is key for him is not to make a critical mistake. It's his first ball game, and he's entitled to some mistakes, but he can't make any in this ball game because it's too big a game, and he, they'll lose if he, uh, if he makes a critical mistake. Here's the handoff, looking for some running room. It's Leroy Horde. He gets tangled up with his own people and gets down to about the 10 for a pickup of two. Michael Taylor, the starting quarterback for Michigan, taking the helmet in the back, and he's on the sideline, sore and tight. There's your scoring summary in the ball game to this point. It was 7-6 at halftime. And that's what happened in the third quarter, and we have 24 seconds remaining in quarter number three. And yes, it's getting dark. I was just going to say, we need some lights here in the booth, and we need some lights here in the stadium. Been raining most of the day, and uh, it's not rained, however, since early on in the ball Watch game. for a blitz, Keith, right along here somewhere. Yep, looks like it, but you can almost see the way Terrell, the safety, was acting. Yep. The whistle stopped them before they get the snap off. And the reason for that is the third quarter is over. The crowd, 105,912 at Michigan Stadium. Did you hear about the party? Monday Night Live after the game on 7. Seventeen to six, Notre Dame by eleven as we go to the final quarter of play. The ball is down at the ten yard line. The last team to repeat as national champion, if that is wondered through your mind, was Alabama in the AP poll at 78 and 79. Quarterback comparison, the youngster Gerbach coming in in relief of Taylor. And it is second down and seven from the Irish 10. Run it up the middle. There goes Horn to the one and a first and goal for Michigan. This possession coming up on first down and goal. Ball is just inside the two. Bowles, Munch, and Horde in the wishbone set. This is Horde. Caught once behind the line of scrimmage, and now the Irish bury it. And it was Chris Zorich, the nose guard, number 50, that came firing through and got the first piece of the action. One thing you cannot do on the, on inside the five yard line on the three yard line is lose yardage on first down. They were down at the one or two yard line. I think you've got to run up inside, especially with the strength of the backs you have. Horde is a big back. Uh, Bunch is a big back. When you run wide with the, the, the guys that don't have the speed, especially with the quickness of Notre Dame, your chances of losing yardage are great. Same set. Loss of almost two yards on that last play. They go inside this time, and there's nothing there. Too late now. Yep. You could have pushed it in from the one or two. It's, you can't push it in from the five. Nope. Well, the other thing and the point to be made is the big wide bodies of Michigan have just not knocked the Notre Dame defense out of the way. That's the Irish have stepped them. It's a great point to make. Notre Dame coming into the, the last year, I, I, I say, was number 10 in the, in the nation in run defense. They have shut down Michigan's run. We said at the beginning of the game that Michigan outweighed their men 40 pounds per man. Michigan has not run that well. Leads pass here, doesn't it? On third down and goal from the five. Shoots it into the end zone. Touchdown, Walker!
whether you need to make a touchdown or whether you can uh, kick a field goal to tie the game. Or it brings the play in. Now Michigan reluctantly, reluctantly is going to spend the timeout. But it's the right thing to do. If you're not organized, call a timeout, get the right play on. This play is worth two points. Well, this lanky fellow from Willoughby Hills, Ohio, who was thrust into the pressure cooker with the injury to Michael Taylor. And he throws this bullet for the TD. Here's your man right here. Here's a tight end. The motion man's going to go back out and go down the field. Walker's just going to get into the end zone and hook to the outside. The impressive thing about Gerbach, he doesn't get rattled. He's tall. He can see. He throws away from the defensive men to the outside. It's, it's not easy to throw down in this area because the defensive backs aren't going to move a lot. Volkar right there with the size of Walker and the throw by Gerbach. The throw is away from uh, Volkar. The first touchdown pass for that young man right there is a big one. You know, sometimes, Keith, in a situation like this, where you come in off the bench, it's not as difficult to go out and play well as if you knew you all along all week that you were going to be the guy starting. There's no pressure on Gerbach. He can just come in and play, and if he doesn't play well, well, nobody expected him to do well anyway. Yeah, he'll faint at nine tonight. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's not to take anything away from the young man. He certainly has done an outstanding job. Yes. And as we say, he may just continue from this and go on and do this every week. Six out of seven, 59 yards and a touchdown in that particular possession. And they're going for two right here. They go trips to the top of the picture. Look for a blitz. And yeah, they bring uh, Howard back this way. Into the corner for Howard. He got it. No, he did not get it. He was out of bounds. He was out of bounds. I thought for a second you had another near miracle, but they wave it off. Gerbach is being blitzed from the right side. Throws the ball high and to the outside. This is a good throw, good coverage. Never had it. Pat Terrell was there, but Howard almost reeled that thing in, didn't he? Almost. Shake almost it up. There. This is Roger Twybill in New York. First meeting ever between Illinois and Colorado. And for the Buffs, Darian Hagan pitches back to Eric Bieniemy. Look at this right-handed pass going to his left. MJ Nelson wide open, 48 yards in the touchdown. Bieniemy also a couple of runs as the Buffaloes win at 38-7. And Keith, they go to Washington on the 30th. Desmond Howard shaken up in his effort to make that two-point pass completion. He just didn't have control of the ball. He was inbound. The original signal indicated he was out of bounds, and that's not the case at all. He just didn't have control of it. But Elvis Gerbach has got Michigan back in the hunt. 17 to 12 at 12.58 to play, and Ghulam Khan will kick it off. You just got to stop this guy now. That's right. From the nine, here he comes. Rocket to the 30. Here he goes. Goodbye. Touchdown, Notre Dame. No flag. Give him the rest of the day off, Lou. Woo. He's had two kickoff returns for touchdowns today. He had two all of last year, led the nation in kickoff return average. And he's only a sophomore. Hendrick for the extra point try. It's good. When Lou Holtz first came to Notre Dame, they had good players, but not a lot of speed. One of the first things he did was went out and recruited some speed. He 
breaks the tackle there. Poor tackling past that point. Once he gets that much daylight, oh, forget yeah. it. Yeah. Cool. You got to get him back there. You give up an angle to him, and it's over. Notre Dame, the last few years, has been good with returns. The blocking, Grunhard, number 75. Good blocking up front. Tim Brown did a lot of this when he was at Notre Dame. And as I mentioned earlier, looks like they're grooming this young man to follow in his footsteps. You talk about letting the air out of the Michigan balloon on the sideline. Ooh. But you got that big, lanky kid that doesn't know how hard this game is yet. That's right. <laughs> so. That's right. What a day for Ismail. My goodness. <laughs> well, each time it looks like Michigan is back in the ball game, uh, and they had some momentum at the end of the first half. They were back in it at that point. And here comes Rocky, blows them open to start the second half and blows them open to start the uh, fourth quarter. And now Michigan will have to go to work from the 20 after Hendrick kicks it deep into the end zone. The thing that pops into my mind about special teams touchdowns against Michigan, that this is Michigan's first game. And uh, he's got nine starters back on defense and eight starters back on offense. But how many did he have back on the coverage teams? And who does he have on there? Yep. I mean, you know, this is an area where a lot of coaches put a lot of their best players, but, you know, until you really get in the action out there and cover some against the top quality return man like uh, Ishmael or against Ricky Waters on punt returns, uh, this is one of the areas that, that Michigan has really turned up weak today. All right, if Gerbach stays out there at quarterback with uh, Horde and Bunch behind him, and Callaway and uh, McMurtry, the White Ox. First down for Michigan at the 20. And they run it with Horde, and for the first time today, Leroy Horde gets a little daylight and comes bolting across the 40 to the 43-yard line before Francisco brings him down. Well, this was a point that Lou Holtz made in a conversation Mike Adamley had with him on why it's so difficult to play a team like Michigan, where Michigan controls the ball. Sure, that's what they want to do. But this is a team that can hit you like a bolt of lightning on the ground, not necessarily with the, with the ball in the air, but on the ground, and that was almost a bolt right there. Bowles average a year ago was 128 yards. Today, Tony's been very quiet. Deep drop by Gerbach. Pass thrown out to Jared Bunch. And Bunch running, uh, he's running east and west for a man 240 pounds. And you got a penalty flag thrown. Jared just couldn't get squared up and get his shoulders uh, square and start downfield. It just kept knocking him sideways. Penalties against Michigan, so the Wolverines hurt themselves with a holding call at 12-17 to play in the ball game. Our Honda Scholar Athlete of the Week, brought to you by American Honda, supporting amateur athletics, and the award goes to Pat Chafee, senior fullback, Oregon State University. And their win last week over Stanford, he had 69 yards and a touchdown, caught five passes. Honda will present a check for $2,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of Oregon State University. Business major. Pat Chaffee, great point, three. Penalty backs him up to the 33-yard line. Gerbach gets his pass away, good to Callaway. He's nibbling, picking up some of it, trying not to be too greedy about it. And we're inside 12 minutes to go in the ball game. And the Irish on top by 12, 24 for 12. Holtz says winning on the road is, is, is difficult. You don't have the crowd, but those two long kickoff returns certainly took the crowd out of this game very quickly. It's second down at about 15. Pressure coming, Gerbach runs away from it, pulls it down and takes off to the sidelines and runs out of bounds at the 39-yard line. There's the penalty flag. There's a first down. 
Or is it going to go the other way? Let's see. Might be a Michigan man that drew that flag. Or Zorich. Yeah. yeah. No, it's Horde. Horde hit Zorich. Yeah. Well, Chris had pulled up, and Leroy Horde coming across thought that he was going after his man and uh, laid a block on him. And uh, well, too late. The, the first game problems are creeping up for uh, Bo Schembechler. Stupid penalties, stupid mistakes. He's had a holding penalty and a personal foul penalty, penalizing him 25 yards on this drive alone. Yep. Yep. Never lost to the same team three consecutive years or times, and he's lost to Notre Dame the last two years. Better hurry today. That mark will fall. Ball comes all the way back to the 24, and it's third down and a half mile. Gerbach airs it out underneath. Throws it hard and low, and Derek Walker couldn't come up with it. A lot of running room now, too, if he could have caught that ball in stride. Well, I, there, there was an instance where uh, perhaps experience, uh, lack of experience, hurt Gerbach because he threw the ball hard when he didn't have to and threw it low and away. Good point. All he had to do is touch it to his man because he was wide open. So it's fourth down, they got to punt it. And they need something heroic here from Ascona. He's had one good one today, a 48. And they're messing with more dynamite. And this man right here. Yep. He's been quiet today, but I'll guarantee you. See what he you, did last year. Mm -hmm. He's about as good as anybody when he gets, gets it cracking. There's no substitute for foot speed. You cannot coach foot speed. Michigan dives after the ball. It touched a Notre Dame man, it looked like. And the guy on the sidelines is waving his arms and pointing the tother way. So it'll be Irish ball. 36 yard punt. And Sean Smith looked like the man who dove on it and kept it for the folks in white. Well, the ball did hit one of the Notre Dame men that was back. And then he fell on it, so there was no question whose possession. To the right of your screen. Yeah, hit him in the back, and then he was smart enough to say, hey, I better fall on that ball. Well, I think he saw the Michigan. If he hadn't seen the Michigan man looking for the ball, he might have done it. Bo <laughs> knows baseball. Bo knows football. Bo knows basketball, too. Bo knows tennis? No. Bo knows race. Bo, you don't know diddly. This is Roger Twibell in New York, Ohio State University, celebrating their centennial of college football, and they're doing it by putting it in the air. Greg Fry, 285 yards in the day, 33 of those on this touchdown pass to Bernard Edwards against Oklahoma State. They go on to win it 37-13. They play Southern Cal next week. Let's go back to Keith Jackson. Right now, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame leading by 12 points on the football first down at their own 43-yard line. Anthony Johnson and Ricky Waters lined up behind Tony Rice. And Ismail goes in motion. Rice on an option. Roll out to the corner, and down he goes. Runs into Alex Marshall. And Alex brings him down. It's the old quarterback run play, and Michigan's defense is up to that one. Michigan's problem now are, uh, is stopping and obviously getting the ball back so they can get a couple more possessions. They need two touchdowns. Notre Dame doesn't have to score. They just need to make first downs and eat some time off the clock. Second down and 12 for the Irish at the 41, a loss of two by Rice. Timeout. Notre Dame. The key plays in the ball game to this point. Well, they're pretty obvious if you've been watching all day. Here's one. 
This one goes 89. Huge gap right up the middle. Coverage team for Michigan just giving up the hole. This one goes 92. These returns have really been right up the middle. It hasn't been right or left. Coverage a little bit better, but the tackling was poor. And the special teams for Michigan all day, beginning with the missed extra point, the poor punting, and the poor coverage. I'm sure that if Bo loses this game, he's going to say the special teams really cost us that ball game. He's got a brother, a wide receiver at Syracuse. And they call one of them the missile and one of them the bomb, and he's the rocket. His mother had a great line last year. She said, I guess I'm the, means I'm the launching pad. <laughs> uh -oh. All right, let's try it now. Second down and 12 from the 41. Out of the wishbone, Tony Rice back. Penalty flag goes down. You got a holding call coming up against Notre Dame. And Rice will go down around the 42 yard line. It could be third down, 11, or it could be second down and 22. Rice has really not been the problem today for the Michigan uh, offense. Really, the special teams have been the problem. Johnson up the middle, the fullback, and uh, they've really contained Tony Rice pretty good. We're told now that Gulam Khan broke his arm. Place kicker, Michigan's place kicker broke his arm. Holding on the offense, decline. In trying to get involved on the play on Ismail when he ran 92 yards for the touchdown. So the bad news continues to accumulate for Michigan as they decline that the holding call, and it'll be third down 11 with the ball resting at the Irish 42. There's the place kicker, he's a senior. His season may, may be done, maybe not. He's one of two that Bo has used today. Yeah, and Carlson also been kicking. All right, Rice just straight back. And Tony's got a first down and more. Out of bounds inside the Michigan 35 yard line. Trip Welburn finally came across to get him. I don't know. Would you think that was. No. No, that was an honest pass, and uh, that was all his own ability. He just took off running, and nobody could catch him. Well, Toronto wins in the American League East. Boston, Oakland lost in the American West. The Cubs lost in the National East, and the Giants and Padres postponed. What? It's raining in the West. 100 degrees when I left the other day. This is Ricky Waters. And he'll go down after a yard brought down by Brett White. But all of this now is playing Notre Dame's tune because you got 940 to play in the game yep. and uh, Michigan is down by 12 points. Michigan needs two possessions and in those possessions they need touchdowns. They need some turnovers. They need to, their defense to take the ball away, knock it loose somehow get possession of that ball. Mahalko and Culver in the backfield behind Rice. That's Culver. And he has a yard or so. T.J. Osman. Middle guard for Michigan making the initial hit. Nine minutes to play in the ball game. Michigan started off slowly last year. They uh, lost to uh, Michigan, they lost to Miami and tied at Iowa. They started off 0-2-1. Oh, That's yep. right. And uh, Well, for Notre Dame, I felt all along, Bob, going into this game, that this game was more important for Notre Dame than for Michigan because Michigan's big ticket is the conference. They have something to play for after this. Rice 
He is dragged down for a loss on the play. The Wolverines trying to strip the ball again. It's Brent White. Notre Dame, in effect, uh, if you're talking about polls, uh, play for the polls. They play for the national championship well, because they're an independent team. That's right. You're talking about independence, and independents have won five of the last seven national championships. It was Miami twice, uh, Penn State twice, and uh, of course Notre Dame last year. And Florida State's been knocking on the door. Yep. So here comes a, a major league-sized field goal try by Young Hendrick from the 40. 41. It's 51 yards, and it is no good. Kick is not good. He misses from 51. Longest field goal that I know of we've had this season was Jason Henson the other day. 58. 7.53. Play it a ball game. Michigan Wolverines have 693 victories, more than any other Division 1A school in the nation. Just a tad surprised, admitting now that uh, if, if young Hendrick hits that ball down the middle, he was long enough, just barely, but it would have uh, made it a 15-point lead for Notre Dame, but in so doing and missing, they now give Michigan the ball, first down at their own 33. Or if Michigan had blocked it, mm -hmm. they're going the other way. Got a cheap touchdown. Yep. And, uh, you know, that was a... Uh, Interesting call. Yeah. But that's Lou. <laughs> he ain't going to do what you expect to do. No, he's sure. not. Gerbach in there, six out of his last seven passes in relief of Michael Taylor, who was injured in the third quarter. And here comes Tony Bowles. And Tony runs it. Ball carried by Tony Bowles. A long way, but actually only picks up about three and a half yards. On Saturday, you get a doubleheader here on ABC Sports. Ohio State, big winner today against Southern California. That's at uh, 3.30 Eastern. And then these Michigan Wolverines will be on the road at Pasadena against UCLA. Second down and close to five. Catch made, first down, 45-yard line. Ball drilled, tough catch by Callaway as Todd Light unloaded on him. Gerbach doing a nice job. Running the uh, two-minute drill, signaling the routes, the protection, throwing against a top-flight secondary for Notre Dame. 7.20 to play in the game. As they roll the clock, we're back at 6-5 again. Drills the ball. He's a yard short of his first down to Callaway. But Chris is out of bounds, and that kills your clock at 7-12. The short passes are all right with 7 minutes and 12 seconds to go. Notre Dame is in a deep zone. The short stuff is there. You've got time to take the short stuff sure. and go down and score. Smagala, the man who made the stop. They score, <clears throat> make it 24-19. The last five minutes or so might be kind of exciting. Confidence growing for the redshirt freshman. Back to throw it again. Down the middle. That should get a flag because Ned Volkar was all over Derek Walker. I mean, Ned had saddled it. He didn't have a blanket. He just saddled it. Mike Adamley. Well, Keith, I was on the Notre Dame sidelines moments ago, and... Uh, you remember that late hit that Chris Orris took? Well, he was telling me on the sidelines, hey, I got that guy's number. So next time Leroy Horde carries the football, watch out, number 50 might be on top of him, legally, of course. Well, I just missed the call because I, looking at what I saw, I thought sure as the world that had to be a pass interference. But Tom Quinn, the referee, comes over and says it's an ineligible man downfield. We have an eligible receiver. The end was covered. Five yard penalty, previous spot. No loss of down. It's still second down. Two. So look at Zorich. Played an outstanding game today. Nobody has run that well. Michigan has not run that well. Went to the same high school as Dick Butkus and Keena Turner. 
couple of pretty good defensive players. It's second down and six as Gerback drops, gets his pass off down the middle. It's good to Callaway. And Callaway is down to the Notre Dame 27-yard line for a first down. That's the deep zone gives you that territory, and his running, man was there. They're running a square in behind the linebackers. This kid has not thrown a bad ball yet. From the 27, back he goes again. Still pretty good pressure. Sets up the screen. Horde's got it. And a terrific play by Volcar. Had fought his way through the block. Wrapped him pretty good. Nice call, good defense by Bolcar. Poor execution. The linemen were out there. They just didn't get away from uh, the receiver and get out and get their blocks. Second down, six. They're back underneath again to Jared Clint. Big fullback has got to put his head down and punch it, and he did to about the 20 yard line. 6.20 to play in the game. Now, when you say big fullback, you mean at 240 pounds and a good receiver. It is third down. A better part of four. Short of the first down. Bunch caught it on the bounce. But in so doing, lost his momentum and fell down. And now, you're going to have a play, y'all. Uh, you got to go. You got to go for it. You don't want to use your timeouts. You got to get the play in. So they spent the timeout on fourth down. Burback is 12 of his last 13. You got 5.50 to play. Time is the most precious commodity in Michigan Stadium right now. And the team that owns it is wearing white, which means they're the visitors. For the home team, Michigan, they're looking at fourth down, very short, maybe, what, five inches look like? But still, the defensive unit of Notre Dame has been called to the sidelines for a conference. A little motivational speech by Lou Holtz, and he is good at it. Mike Alvarez, the defensive coordinator, did most of that talking. Barry Alvarez has done a nice, nice job. He's lost several players. We talked about him earlier in the ball game. All right, fourth down, short length of the ball for Michigan. Bunch has it. He'll have the first down at the Irish 16-yard line. They'll stop the clock while they move the chains and unpile the crowd. Next for Notre Dame is Michigan State. At home. Five forty six. Reminder that Chevrolet will be giving a thousand dollars to each of the universities for the general scholarship fund after we have named the most valuable players from each of the teams. Now it is first down for Michigan. They go to split backs. Notre Dame leading 24 to 12 in the late stages, and Gerbach gets the pressure. They blitz him, and Bolcar got him. We've been waiting and waiting and waiting for yep. the blitz to come, and finally there it was. Barry Alvarez, defensive coordinator, holding the blitz out at the right time. Good call. The ball comes back to the 25-yard line. Where it is second down and 19 for the Wolverines. Underneath. Pass is caught by Horde, but that won't get it done. 
Number 36, Don Grimm, there to make the tackle for the Irish. And the ball comes back inside the 20. Here's a look at the defensive coordinator, Barry Alvarez. He's in Iowa for a while, doing a very good job over here. Airbox pass incomplete. Penalty flag, gonna nail Grimm, look like. Well, Bolkar got away with one earlier, I thought. Let's see whether or not uh, they get Don here for Horde. Because he and Horde did bang together. As a receiver, he's going to come out and hook in this area, and the linebacker is just going to get there a little bit too quickly. Just a curl by the uh, halfback coming out. Bolkar reads it well, just doesn't time. Grim hits it. Grim, sorry, Grim. What you need to run down here inside the 20, Keith, instead of those curls with the linebackers, like Grim can come up and make a play, or the slants mm -hmm. by the wide receivers, the little uh, look-ins by the wide receivers. So. You need to keep your receivers moving. The clock is settled right now at 4.44. The ball is at the Irish 13. Callaway and McMurtry to the top of the screen there. They are the outside people. Both big, both quick. It is first down for Michigan. Oh, that's a dangerous pass. Two things can happen. One, it can be intercepted for six points, and secondly, you can get your wide receiver killed. Todd Light just clobbered Chris Callaway, but he bounced up. Colt says that Light has more potential than any defensive back he's ever seen. On top of that, he caught the ball, but <laughs> second down and six. McMurtry sideline, got it. And he's a yard short of the first down. And he got out of bounds, and they're not using a whole lot of time in this kind of pattern because only well, you had 420, now you have 444. You've had two plays, you still got 412. It's third and about a yard, and the ball is just inside the Notre Dame four. 24-12, Irish lead. The difference in this ball game, two kick returns. Now they're going to call a timeout. Barry Alvarez wants it. But the two kick returns by Raghib Ismail of 89 and 92 yards. The story of this game. Bo Schembechler leads Rose Bowl champion Michigan back to Pasadena to meet Pac-10 power UCLA. It's a college football special next Saturday night on ABC Sports. This is Roger Twibel in New York. It hasn't been easy for Craig Erickson in the Miami Hurricanes against California. He was intercepted three times, but here he finds Dale Dawkins on an 18-yard touchdown pass. His second of the day, they lead it 24-3. Let's go back to Keith Jackson in Notre Dame and Michigan. It is third down, half a yard, maybe not even that much for Michigan. The ball is inside the Notre Dame four-yard line. Oh, it's hollering about something. What? I'm not sure. Four minutes and 12 seconds to go in the game. And the Irish leading by 12. Get a first down, it stops the clock to move the change, so they might go for that, run it. Try to get back up in a hurry. Only got one out, going to throw it. Touchdown, McMurtry! will try to kick the point at 4.08. Good. McMurtry 
is here on the touchdown. The inside receiver will break to the outside, and McMurtry just runs the slant, and Gerbach will hit him with the ball. Watch the defensive back lined up over McMurtry. He's lined up to the outside, just gives McMurtry the inside release. That's like stealing there. You just have to throw it around the linebackers, and that's what you need to throw inside the 20. As you take a look at the quarterback, Gerbach, good sidelines, 6'5", and boy, has he come a long way in about an hour. Well, he's 17 of 21 for 134 yards and two touchdowns. He's hit 16 of his last 17 and 10 in a row. Well, he's made everybody forget about Demetrius Brown, Wilbur Oldham's, and all the other quarterbacks that were behind Taylor coming into the year. He's going to be pushing Taylor now for the starting job. Well, now you have your decision. Notre Dame thinks the Michigan's going to try the onside kick because they've got receivers and DBs and those kind of folks. Yeah. You know who else is up there on the second line for Notre Dame? Look at that. Tony Rice. Tony Rice. He got the good the hands. Quarterback people. is up there on the receiving team and he's standing right about the 45 yard line. You get your good hands people out there. I'd kick it deep. You have one timeout left. Rain's falling again now. Started raining about 10 minutes ago, maybe eight minutes ago. They're going to go onside. There it is. Didn't go 10 yards. Well, the special teams have just undermined the effort of the Michigan football team today. Now, that was a very, very poor execution of an onside kick. I and mean, even if there had been nobody around, it wasn't going to go 10 yards. Well, the special teams, as we take another look, has really killed Michigan today. This kick, I mean, they work on this about three times a week, and when they do, you're supposed to kick it 10 yards and go down and try to recover. Now you give the, give Notre Dame the ball. I think, I think, I think you should kick it deep. You've got one timeout left. You got four minutes and eight seconds to play. Tony Rice sets him up with Waters and Johnson behind him and keeps it. And he runs into Trip Weldon at about the 35. And Tony winds up with close to six yards on the carry as he muscles his way down to the 33. Miami's got that one in hand. California is uh, liable to beat some folks this year that they're not some, some, some of you might not think they're going to beat. They're not a bad team. Got a fine quarterback in Troy Taylor. Ball is at the 33. Rice and Notre Dame just want to hold on to the football. I'd be surprised if you see him pitching it. I understand it's raining again now on the field. Make sure Hands the off. Yep. <laughs> Anthony Johnson in the stack. And the clock now running. Michigan has one timeout to play with. 24-19 your score. And 310 to play in the game. Got to use that timeout. Inside three minutes. You can't stop the ball, stop the clock when you're on the defense. You can on offense with an incomplete pass. And away on defense is with a timeout. On third and three. They got it. Ah, but, but. Chris Hutchinson made the tackle. They are within range. Oh, you, just, you, know, you go for it on fourth down here. See you. You kick, you kick a field goal, it only makes it 27 to 19. You got to make it. You got to go for it on fourth down here. Over comes in, and yeah. they're going. No, you got to go for it. I mean, it's a wet day. The, if, the, if the kick is blocked, bad snap. This something down the line is your big moment right here. Timeout, 158 to play in the ball game. That's Notre Dame's last. A recent survey of college students said they were not so interested in giving so much as in receiving. Yet at Notre Dame, students have always put their time where their values are. 
For them, volunteering is a commitment that educates. As they work with mentally and physically handicapped children, they are taught. Taught things like patience, kindness, and respect. The final lesson for students is that there are many things to learn in college, and one is how to care. Here we go to the last 158. Notre Dame owns the football. Fourth down and one yard. The ball is just short of the 29-yard line on the Michigan side of the field. 24-19. Number one, Notre Dame, defending national champion. Against number two, Michigan, according to the AP poll. Johnson and Culver in the backfield. Along with Eilers, they hand it inside, and it looks like a good mark for Notre Dame. Tom Quinn is the referee, and he says it's too important. Let's not guess. Bring me the change. His time, 154 to play in the ballgame. First down. Miami now putting a lock on that game with California with another score. Indiana winning today after losing last week. Minnesota coming out with a win. Wisconsin getting a win. Washington handling Purdue out in Seattle. BYU bouncing back. And Rutgers beating Jack Picknell's Golden Eagles. The football is near the 27th of Michigan. Now it looks pretty tough for the Wolverines. The Irish, Tony Rice keeps it. Options down the line. They throw him down around the 25 yard line. That's where his progress was stopped. Beta Murray and Eric Anderson. The spirit of Akron. Captain John Moran of Big Spring of Spring, Texas. Of Big Spring of Spring. Floating around up there today in gray skies is the spirit of Akron. High tech, state of the art. Got a gyro cam in it, and it provides spectacular pictures. It would be a better day on a better than on a day like yesterday when we had some sunshine. What Lou Holtz is telling the crew is just hold on to the football. Don't fumble it. The only chance for Michigan is if you drop the ball. And on the other side, the word was go for the ball. Both teams now have spent their times out. Michigan there in order to kill the clock rather than stand helplessly by and watch the time tick away. And the uh, special teams, the kicking game. Everybody used to go, oh, coach, what do you want to talk about the kicking game for? Well, you saw a classic example today of how much it could mean as Raghib Ismail goes 89 to start the second half. He goes 92 early in the fourth quarter. And uh, that took a whole lot of air out of the balloon. But for the future of the University of Michigan, a 6'5 redshirt freshman named Elvis Gerbach showed up and rang up some startling numbers in the second half. Tony Rice keeping the ball, protecting it, wrapping both arms around it. And the clock now is running. Nobody can stop it unless somebody is penalized. The only person who can stop it is the man in the white hat, Tom Quinn. Go back to what we talked about at the opening about Tony Rice. What a winner this young man is. He's uh, been on two state championship teams back in Woodruff, South Carolina. Lost two games that in his four-year career, high school career. And those two losses were in the state finals. The other two years, he won the championship game. He won a national championship at Notre Dame last year. Somehow, some way, he gets it done. 
Clock continues to tick along. 86 times they've had over 100,000 in Michigan Stadium consecutively. And uh, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame are about to hang something here on Bo Schimbeck with it's never been done before. That's beat him three consecutive years. Bo may have lost the game, but he may have found his quarterback for the future. Elvis Gerbach. This game is over. Notre Dame, 24, Michigan, 19. The Chevrolet, most valuable player of the game for each team for the 19th consecutive year. For Notre Dame, Ragib Ismail with those two startling kickoff returns for touchdowns. Elvis Gerbach for Michigan, who was 17 of 21, 134 yards, and two touchdowns to bring us to the exciting close. So there you have your final score. Chevrolet giving $1,000 to each of the school's general scholarship fund. The Irish win it. They've won 14 in a row. This week on ABC's Monday Night Football, two of the NFL's top quarterbacks square off. John Elway and the Denver Broncos against Jim Kelly and the Buffalo Bills live at 9 Eastern. Next Saturday, ABC's College Football features two Big Ten Pac-10 matchups. Day night doubleheader, 3.30 Eastern. The Ohio State Buckeyes and the Trojans of USC. Then a primetime special. Rose Bowl champion Michigan going back to Pasadena to take on the UCLA Bruins beginning live at 8 Eastern. Aerial camera facilities provided by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. ABC's College Football has been brought to you by Honda, who invites you to test drive the all-new Accord at your Honda dealership starting October 5th. By Anheuser-Busch, we brew our fine quality beers to be enjoyed responsibly. Remember, know when to say when. By Sharp Electronics, from sharp minds come sharp products. And by UPS, fast, efficient service to 175 countries and territories worldwide. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television.